Hey everybody, it's Shelly with the Iowa Quilt Block and today we are going to have a tutorial on making this super cute spring pillow. And um, I don't know about where you live, but here in central Iowa I actually saw my first robin. So perhaps the groundhog was correct and we are going to have an early spring. I really, really hope so. Um, I believe today is going to be 60 degrees, so we're going to love it. So this cute pillow is a quilt as you go project. And Sarah is going to walk through it with you um, right now. So we have our 13 and a half inch square of batting, and to start, we're going to choose whichever fabric we like. I'm gonna go ahead and do the Easter eggs. And we're gonna put it corner to corner. Cause that is gonna be our first strip on our quilted pillowcase. So it does not have to be perfect or precise since we are quilting as we go. I'm just gonna snip the end of that off with my shears and put this scrap over to the side. Then I'm going to choose another one to go next to that. I think the pink will look really cute. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to lay it down, guesstimate where the end is, and give it a little snip. I'm just going to lay this scrap over to the side with the other one in case we want to use that one again later. Since this is quilt as you go, you're going to line these up and just throw a couple pins in there. doesn't have to be perfect um, because Quilt As You Go is very forgiving. We're just going to sew it at a quarter inch so the pins are more to keep things in place as I'm moving it from the cutting mat to the sewing table than anything else. So I got a face to face, got it pinned at the diagonal and then we're going to move over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew it at a quarter inch seam right along here. Now we're at the machine and we're just gonna whip out a quick little quarter inch seam here. All right, we are back at our cutting mat here. So what I'm gonna do now is just finger press the seam open Make sure everything's kind of nice and flat and just run my fingernail along it. And you can also hit it, shaking the camera a little bit there. You can also hit it with an iron if you would like, but uh, finger pressing will do you just fine on this one, this project that we're doing. All right. Now we're going to choose another color. I think I might do pinks. And then maybe some words. Probably should have planned ahead before I just started sewing, but that's okay. It'll turn out lovely no matter how we do it. We got the pink, some words, some blue, a couple blues. And then I think we're going to use the scrap from our eggs do those again in the corners I think that will be super cute now that we have a plan move these off to the side we're gonna go ahead and pin our other pink strip on we'll take this back over to our machine get this sewn and get going from there Back over to the cutting table to do our next couple of strips. All right, we're gonna go ahead and finger press again. And just kind of gently push that down. If I finger press too aggressively, my camera shakes, so I'm doing a very gentle little pat down there. And now that we've got the middle and the first two on, we can speed up the process a little bit by doing two at a time. 
So I'm going to lay down my words here. And I'm going to lay down my words right here. And we're going to go ahead and do a quick pin on those. All right, I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine. I don't think you need to see me sew a whole bunch of quarter inch seams, so I'm gonna sew this really quick and I will be right back to pin the next row. All right, so you guys can see this quilt as you go is coming together very, very quickly, super cute, super easy. Um, I feel like you guys kind of have the gist of it. So you're gonna lay them down face to face, sew a quarter inch seam super easy peasy i am going to speed through the last couple of rows of this and then we'll come back to go on to the next steps now that we've got all of our rows done we're going to go ahead and give this a trim um, down to that 13 and a half inch square size so we're just going to trim around the edges of our batting here. Make sure no edges are flipped up because you don't want to trim off anything important. This project is pretty forgiving so don't worry too much about having anything perfectly square if your lines are a little wonky it is no big deal especially once you get it on a pillow form it will pop up and hide all of your mistakes there all right so now we can see it I'll give that a little press there all right, and now we are ready to move on to the next steps. So this next part is optional, but something we thought was super cute. We are gonna add a little felt bunny applique to the top of our pillow. So here, all I did was print off a stock photo of a rabbit that I thought was really cute. And I'm gonna trace it onto the paper side of my trans web. So one side you can see like the texture of the stabilizer, the other is paper. So you wanna make sure you trace it on. You wanna make sure you trace it onto the paper there. So using a Sharpie here, you can use whatever you have around. And any of these edges you're not happy with or anything, super easy to fix when you are cutting it out. This is just a nice outline for you to work with perfect I'm gonna go ahead and roughly cut around my rabbit tracing all right we are leaving a little bit of extra all the way around him because we will trim it to the edge once it is fused onto our felt Got my felt here, doesn't matter really what side I fuse him on. Felt doesn't really have a right or wrong side. I'm gonna put him on the edge so I can use the extra later on a project. I find Transweb fuses best with a little bit of steam, but you can use whatever works for you. Steam a seam would also work for this. Any double-sided paper backed fusible will work for this purpose. So I'm gonna speed this up a little bit as I get him all fused on to the felt here. So I, how I like to test and make sure it is fused fully is just peel up a corner and if it peels cleanly away from your stabilizer, you are fully fused and then just It'll stick right back down so you don't have to worry about that. All right, I'm gonna get him fully cut out now. I'm gonna use my shears. Tried my snips earlier, but you know, snips aren't really made to cut felt and they were just not having it. So I'm gonna use my nice sharp fabric scissors.
All right, so you can turn them over. And if there's anything you don't like, oopsie. If there's anything you don't like once you have him trimmed, this is the perfect time to go ahead and fix that. I am overall pretty happy. There we go, rounded out his hand a little more, but otherwise, I think that looks super cute. All right, now we are gonna peel the paper backing off of our rabbit. It should peel off nice and smoothly, and we've got a nice, smooth, slightly shiny back, and that's where you can tell where your stabilizer is. So now we are gonna figure out where to put our bunny. This, I'm just gonna do one bunny today, but it would be super cute to do like, you could do two bunnies, you could do kissing bunnies. There are so many different ideas you could do with this felt idea. Very excited to play around with it on other pillows. So now I'm gonna make sure he's in far enough that he won't get caught in the seam allowance, which will be about a quarter inch or so, but I do still want him in that corner. So once I'm happy with the placement, I am going to go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with my iron again. All right, now that we've got the bunny fused, I'm gonna take him over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna do a little stitch around the edge there just to make sure he will stay on. Since it's a high use item like a pillow, you wanna make sure this little guy is securely applied. I've chosen a blanket stitch to do around the edge of my little bunny here. All right, so we are going to go ahead and get going and just quickly stitch around this little guy here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and trim my threads there. And you can see we've got our bunny fully sewn down, looking super cute. We're gonna move on to doing the back now. We are doing an envelope style backing for our pillow, which makes it super easy because there are no zippers or anything like that to mess around with. The first step is getting your two nine by 13 and a half inch rectangles. And then we are gonna take them over to our iron and iron one of the long sides of each one about one inch down to create an easy faux binding look. It will just be turned under and look really nice for the top. So I'm gonna take these over to my iron and be right back and I'll come back with them ironed about one inch down. I've got my two pieces with my one inch fold ironed on there. And now we are gonna insert our two eight and a half by 13 and a half inch pieces of batting under the folds. So hold that guy up, line this up, and fold that guy down. Then we are gonna do the same with this one, fold that up. Stick it under, fold it down. I'm gonna take these over to my sewing machine and sew a quick little stitch across both of these just to secure them in place. I'm gonna sew one line closer to the top and one line a little further down just to keep everything nice and secure. Alrighty, I've got my two seams sewed on each one of these little backing pieces. So I did about a quarter inch from the top and then I did a half inch or so from that first stitch line. So if I flip them over, you can see the lines a little more. 
I did forget to change my bobbin thread to match the backing, so my stitching is really visible. If you want a perfect match or a close match, I would recommend changing out your bobbin thread. After I realized I forgot to change my bobbin thread, I decided to just embrace it, and I did some decorative stitching. I put these cute little tulips on here. They match the tulips in the fabric, and I figured, you know what, if it's going to be visible, it may as well be cute. Now that we've got those sewn, we can move on to assembling our pillow cover. To finish constructing our pillowcase, we are going to lay the top of our pillowcase right side up. We are then going to lay our backing pieces on top of that. So we are going to lay one lined up with the bottom and one lined up with the top there. Make sure if you have any little pieces like that, they are pressed down so they don't fold under and surprise you when you are flipping your pillow right side out. I'm going to go ahead and pin around this to hold everything in place. I am going to double pin where my flaps are sitting because you are going to want to backstitch a couple times across these areas to make sure they are firmly held down because this is where a lot of pressure is going to be when you're taking out a pillow form and putting a new one in or switching covers, anything like that. You don't want any split seams after all the hard work you've put into your pillow. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up and we will move on to sewing our pillowcase. Since it is envelope style, you don't need to leave any gaps along the edges. We'll be flipping it from the middle. We're going to take this over to our sewing machine and do our last round of sewing. Now that we've got our edges all sewn, we're going to trim off these extra little bits and we are going to snip the corners to make it easier when we flip it right side out. Now time for the exciting part, flipping it right side out and seeing what our final product looks like. I'm going to pop these corners out. I am so excited. Pop that corner. Pop that corner. All right, and there we have it. This is so cute. I cannot wait to see it on a pillow form. I feel like my rabbit is perfectly situated. Looks like he's sitting, especially once you know you got a pillow in there and it's puffed up. So cute, so easy, so fast, with plenty of time left until Easter. You will have no trouble at all getting one of these done or a whole set of these done. Isn't that such a cute project? Thank you guys so much for joining us for today's tutorial making this cute pillow. Um, there is a pillow kit in the description and also a link to our private Facebook group. Go join our private Facebook group and post pictures of your final projects. We cannot wait to see them. Um, also make sure you do something for yourself today, whether it's going on a walk or just sitting and reading a book or taking a bubble bath or whatever it is that kind of brings you joy and peace and happiness. Take some time for yourself. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to our channel. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful day.